you about something sure. else uh, that's like totally, uh, uh, you know, totally different because it's something that I saw that you talk about, um, which was like this, you talk about the dark side, the dark side of dentistry, like depression yeah. and burnout, right? Or something. Is that, and that's something that uh, you started talking about. Um, uh, is, that, is that how long you've been doing yeah, that? Yeah, the last past couple two, years? I think two years. Yeah, okay. it's, it's been it's, the most rewarding thing that I've done in dentistry, for sure. To talk yeah. about, and it's like it, related to like the the practice of, of dentistry, and I mean the business side of dentistry, and and every just like the stresses that we all encounter as dentists. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's okay. yeah. It was it yeah, came I mean, like, from the fact yeah. that I almost quit a few years ago. So you know I was speaking at the biggest podiums. I have a great practice. I was making good money and I was miserable. Uh -huh. And I almost quit dentistry. It was just, it was so, so, so stressful for me. So as kind of my therapy, I wanted to start talking about it at my lectures. And then what I realized uh -huh. was, wow, I'm not the only one. And not only is it me, most people either were feeling the same you know, anxiety or depression that I was, or they had already been uh -huh. through it, or they knew someone. And I don't know if you know, but we have uh, one of the highest suicide rates in all of mm -hmm. um, all the world in any profession. And we are, uh -huh. I think, 564% more likely to commit suicide just because we're dentists. Okay. So it's a serious okay. thing. Two dentists that I've heard of have committed suicide during this COVID crisis. And yeah. um, just a few days ago, um, a very famous physician in Palm Springs committed suicide. We are at such high risk for this that I feel like, and no one's talking about it. You know, yeah. like we go to, yeah. we go to big symposiums. And everyone's like, how do we do a better crown? How do we bond better? How do we do better implants? How do we do? And I'm guilty of that too, because, you know, I was always teaching clinically, but why, why yeah. don't we have mental health continuing education? You know? And what do you, do you think it's the component of, it, of this thing that we like deal in microns and the clinical component or, or the business aspect? I mean, what, when yeah. you, cause I look at those as two different kind of components of stress related to, to dentistry. And luckily I mean, that's one nice thing about what I do in academics is that you don't have to run a business financial side. Yeah. yeah the business side kind of goes well, there's, away. There's a lot of things. Work. I have about 15 different, different aspects. I mean, everything from working in isolation to working in an environment of fear yeah. to um, litigation complications, all of these things kind of just compound, but a lot of uh -huh. it starts with working with working in an environment of fear. Our patients uh -huh. are afraid of us. They tell us they hate us. You know, every dentist has been told, I hate dentists. No doctor, mm -hmm. I, I don't hate you, but I just hate dentists. And like, we uh -huh. wouldn't say that to anybody else. You wouldn't <laughs> say that to a teacher, yeah. a construction worker, a gardener, even a lawyer. You wouldn't tell them like to, to their face, like I hate, dent I hate lawyers, you know? Um, but people feel okay to tell us this and uh -huh. that kind of weighs on us. I think in the United yeah. States, um, debt is a very big problem. You know, I came out of dental yeah. school with $425,000 of debt before I bought a practice, before I got married, before I went to my residency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that even if you're making good money, you're just like always on this hamster yeah. wheel. Lit litigation yeah. is a huge problem you know dentists are being that's the one that yeah. that's the one that always makes me like litigation i feel like that's like that's what i so before i went back into academics i practiced and i remember a lot of times just thinking when i was doing a procedure i was like am i doing this procedure because i think is the best procedure and a lot of times i'd be thinking i want to do the thing that won't get me sued. you're exactly right and i thought i was like and i mean my wife's a lawyer so that it's, helps it's um you know yeah, so I guess now, I mean, I see what they, and actually her whole family is a bunch oh, of lawyers, nice. but like, I, I mean, I, I feel like that, that, yeah, litigious, the litigious side of like, and I don't know, 
I'm, I'm curious. I wonder what it's like in um, other countries. I know that like when I could touch my grandfather as a physician, I know they always, you know, medicine, they always talk about how it didn't used to be this bad where you were as fear, uh, as fearful yeah. of getting sued. And like now my, you know, uncle or something that's a physician would say is the uh, uh, OB-GYN is like, you know, then their world, I mean, getting, I mean, they get sued frequently for things that happen in people uh, in deliveries and stuff like that. But I mean, I, yeah, the, the, the litigious aspect of, of, um, of practicing dentistry, I, f I feel like is really, I just don't know what to do about it. I mean, I feel like that's, uh, that was, that was something that used to give me a ton of stress. Yeah. Well, was, you hit the uh, nail on the head with this idea of treatment planning to minimize risk. And that's a thing mm -hmm. that we all do, but we shouldn't yeah. do it, right? But we have to, we have to protect yeah. ourselves. You know, is this the best for the patient? Well, I'd really like to do this thing, but I'm much more likely to have a complication. You know, if that works yeah. out, they would have a much better off occlusion or aesthetics or whatever. But eh, it's yeah. kind of risky. There's a there's a quote yeah. from Dental Economics that says nine out of ten dentists should expect to be sued by a patient or employee during their career, Ugh. which is terrible. And the problem yeah. is not suing people because you know there's times when people should be sued. The problem is people are suing dentists because they're not happy with a treatment or because mm -hmm. the treatment didn't work. And uh -huh. that doesn't happen as often in medicine. You know, yeah. if I, I always yeah. give the example, like if I broke my ankle in 30 pieces, I went, the surgeon put it back together, but I limped afterwards, I wouldn't sue the, wouldn't sue the surgeon. And I may yeah. even need a revision surgery that I have to pay for again. Yeah. But if your bite limps, or if your speech limps, then, oh, well, it's the dentist's fault. The dentist did it. They did something wrong. Yeah. And so dentists are being sued and they're settling out of court oftentimes just to limit stress. And that's not right. Yeah. I love that. I think I've heard you give that example before with the physicians because I don't think my, my orthopedic surgeon is my patient. Uh -huh. And I had ACL uh, replacement and it didn't go, it hasn't gone so yeah. well. And I still see him and he asks, how is it doing? I'm like, still not doing that well, but just not. Nah. And we don't worry about it. Like, yeah. he's not like, he doesn't worry about it. He's just like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, well, there's, I have, a, I have a friend who's a foot and ankle <laughs> surgeon and that's kind of where this example huh. comes from. And he calls them revisions. But we huh. don't have revisions in dentistry. We have complications or we have failures, right? So if you know something happens and has to be redone the patient comes to us and says the crown that you did hurt or doesn't work or whatever so you redo it yeah. you pay for it you take your time you redo it and that just doesn't happen in other aspects of medicine yeah and so oftentimes wonder, we do I... it we'll redo it to limit the litigation you know uh -huh. so it's like this this re revisions and, and complications and litigation all coming together and I can imagine too, like some of the stuff, like some of the biomimetic dentistry stuff is like doing a more conservative treatment, realizing that there's potential. I mean, like if you're going to be doing a, some of these large composite uh, adhesive restorations or a partial coverage or something like that, knowing that there's a chance that there could be a complication related to that, that you might not get with a much more aggressive crown. Yeah. Uh, you're, that that that's something where I mean, but I think I think earlier in my in my practicing of dentistry, I felt like I wanted to, to um, I want I was well I, I started off trying to be pretty conservative, but I sometimes would err towards something maybe more aggressive because I was nervous that there would be some type of you know the patient would say is this the standard of care that you didn't have a put a crown here and I just feel like that's such a I've, part of the way I've tried to deal with it is like explain. I mean, I sometimes will have these conversations with my patients and kind of explain to them. And I'm always like happy to know the patients can like appreciate like conservativeness in dentistry and understand that. And if you kind of explain, there could be a potential complication. Like, yeah, this you know, this is a pretty large composite yeah. restoration and it could fail, or this is a, a partial coverage thing, and it, I guess it could debond or something like that. But 
uh, and then they can kind of understand that the, what, the, what, what we're doing this in the name of being more yeah, the, conservative. And that's it, it, comes, that. it comes back to being very open and honest with your patients. And it's funny how that works. You gave a great example. Like if you do a crown and let's say the tooth fractures off below the gum line, the patient comes back and says, okay, we got to do the implant. But if you do, you know, oh. an onlay and your onlay breaks off, but you still have 70%, 75% of the tooth there, the patient comes back and says, oh my gosh, the thing that you did didn't work. And yeah. the example that I always love that Pascal says is if you get in a car accident and you smash your car, but you're still alive, that is a success. Mm -hmm. You know, uh. that's what we were trying to prevent. We're trying to keep the pulp alive. We're trying to keep the tooth in your mouth. I can always yeah. go back and do a crown later if something uh -oh. were to happen, which we know partial coverage works just fine, even better. So yeah. yeah, it's talking with your patients and understanding this. And that was one thing that I really wasn't good at early in my career was telling patients all of the complications that could happen. Hey, Kirito. Thank you. I'm going to do my body. Uh, hey, I'm going to say, SKC. Eu estou falando com meu amigo agora. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he wanted to make sure he got his gummy vitamin this morning. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I, you know, funny, huh? early on, I was telling patients, like, you know, everything I'm doing is perfect and it'll last forever and, you know, I'm the best. And now it's like I almost oh. try to talk patients out of doing treatment. And if they still oh. want to do it, those are the ones for me. And our consent forms have gotten much longer. Our conversations with our patients have gotten much longer, especially when we're doing full arch cases, just to let them know like, hey, if this fails, you got to pay for it again. You got to do it again. Uh -huh. And are you okay with that? If you're not, that's fine. Maybe you're not the right patient for me. But being uh -huh. fair to ourselves and what we do, you know, we shouldn't always have to take the blame for everything. I have this thing that I call the triangle of blame, which is, you have the dentist, you have the patient, and then you have all the other extraneous factors. You know, biology, function, diet, um, genetics, all of this stuff that usually comes back to the dentist. And then we also have the patient. Uh -huh. You know, we can do as much as we want to do. We can do the, the most high-class, research-backed um, treatment. But if the patient doesn't follow the directions, it can fail. And it shouldn't come back mm -hmm. to us for that reason. And so just informing the patients, thinking about that is, um, is something that I think we need to do, do more of. So my idea with huh. talking about stress, burnout, depression is so that, and thank you for bringing it up, is so that people will talk about it because we've lost too many dentists to suicide. And I think it's because yeah. of this societal taboo of talking about depression. I used to think that if you talked about depression or if you had depression, you were weak. And then uh -huh. I went through depression and realized, wait, I'm not weak. I'm just like going through a hard time and there's some things that I need to take care of. And when you uh -huh. hear that, you know, one in five people in the US are on anti-anxiety medication, a lot of people are depressed it's, it's a normal thing. You know, humans, we go up and down yeah. and we work in a very difficult profession. And I just want to have it so that if you have a friend that's a dentist, you can talk to them and say, Hey, you know, I'm really going through a hard time instead of this person yeah. taking their life. I had one of my students that committed suicide at USC in their um, first year of dental school. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that that for me that was a hard that was a hard one of the hardest times of my life was dental I mean I was so unhappy in dental school luckily I had I had family in dentistry I remember my I don't know what this is bad to say but my I had an aunt that told me that she had a certain window when she was in dental school that she thought she would jump out of because she was like constant she was so yeah. um, unhappy when she was uh, in, in dental school. And so I guess I kind of expected, actually, I have to say their stories from when they went to dental school. Much worse. You know, 25 years, much, much worse. worse. Like stepping on cast. Yeah, my dad and, like, said they would take garbage. his cast. If it wasn't good, they'd just smash it on the ground. Yeah. So I guess it wasn't as bad, but it's still, it was like, I loved, I loved high school. I loved college. And I went to dental school and I was just like, 
I used to do this thing where I'd go into my bedroom and I'd get underneath my bed, like underneath the mattress, and I would just lay there. Sometimes my roommate would come in and like I'd be thinking, I'm not gonna tell him I'm under my bed because he's gonna think this is right. weird. But I was just like, I don't know. I just wanted to like get. I was like so un. I was so unhappy. It was so s- stressful for me. Um, yeah, I think that's probably actually one of the reasons. I oh, think. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. I think one of the reasons that happens to us is because as dentists, as well educated people, we're high performers, right? We've always mm-hmm. done well. You know, most of us got good grades in high school, got good grades in college, had to do well in the DAT. And then we get into dental school and it's something we've never done before. And we just expect to be yeah. good at it. And I yeah. remember like first year we had people crying in the hallways, calling their parents saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this. And I think it's getting used to failing. Now, of course we shouldn't try to fail, but we need to know that it's a part of learning. If you want to be a lifelong learner, you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. And one of my mentors, Sasha Jovanovic, I was having a hard time and I was talking with him and he said, Kyle, you know, I've failed more than you've tried. And I was like, whoa. Uh, and he's like a world leader, <laughs> you know? And uh, we need to understand that we have failures and we need to talk to our patients yeah. about that. Yeah. Because that brings the stress ah, back I, onto us. If we, you know, what do they say? It's like, it's an excuse if you don't tell them before, but if you tell them before, something like that. But, you know, yeah, if you told them, yeah, this may question. pop off and then it pops off, they come to you and say, oh yeah, look, exactly what you said happened. <laughs> but if you didn't tell them, yeah. they come to you and say, the thing you did didn't, doesn't work anymore or it's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, yeah. I feel like that, yeah, I like that point that you said about dental about dental school too. Is like it, what it is so different than everything that is that you had done be before. And I think that was I was gonna say that. I mean that it did drive. That's probably I think why I wanted to teach it at dental school. Like I wasn't like I was like so awesome at dentistry. And I was like God, I gotta give these gifts to the world. I think I had like the experience where I was like, you know, it wasn't an easy time for me, and I was like thinking to myself, if I can do anything to make it easier, to make yeah. ex- change experience or uh, innovate anything like that's, I mean, I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but I'm more, I'm working That's like my, that's. Well, I think uh, just cause I had the same, I had the same thing. I wanted to bridge the gap between like the young students and the old faculty. And so when I was teaching uh-huh. and I taught at USC for nine years, I was like, I was out for five or 10 years. I I knew what it was like to be a dentist, but I also remembered what it was like to be a student. And I went to that school too. And so, you know, relating with them and just being there emotionally sometimes is, is what's important for them. Um, That's a good point too. Is like that having that connection to like, remember what you didn't know. Cause that was like, sometimes for me, I'd be sitting there with a faculty member and they'd be trying to explain something up here. And I'd like, I don't know down right. here. So like when you're up here, I'm just kind of like yeah. lost. So like, sometimes I have to like explain like, you know, like what biologic width is before you start talking about like periodontal right. surgeries so that you can like get caught up. So like, I don't know. Yeah. One thing I found <laughs> that I think was the, one of the hardest things for me was the lack of sympathy. So when I started Mm -hmm. going through my hard time, I would talk to people that weren't dentists. So whether that was, Uh you know, uh, my spouse or my friends that worked in tech or they were, they were lawyers or they were a doctor or whatever. They would say, Kyle, what do you have to Uh be worried about? You know, you're a dentist, you make a good amount of money. You have a nice family, you live in a nice area. You're well respected. You travel around the world. Like, what can you be worried about? And I would just be like, mm. you just don't get it. You're not in the yeah. trenches of dentistry. And then when I started talking uh-huh. to dentists, they were like, oh my gosh, yeah. And then that patient said that to you. They say that to me too. Can you believe that they say that? And oh, your staff's doing this. Yeah. And oh, yeah, the, li- the liability of this. And when you talk to another dentist, they get it. They mm. immediately get it. Yeah. And you finally have some sympathy. And that was, I think that was, a, that was something I learned too with like, cause I, I, like I said, I was really unhappy in dental school, but yeah, I had a, I didn't speak about that as much when I was in school. Uh, it wasn't until after I graduated that I talked to people and said like, oh, 
you know, I was, I really had a hard time with this. And they're like, yeah, I didn't get that either. And I was like, really? But nobody said anything. Everybody just went yeah. along like this was easy. And I was like looking around like, why is nobody else, you know, hiding underneath yeah. the bed like I am? Like, I had, maybe it was just because I wasn't open enough about it back then. And then, you know, hear about that other people had a hard time in, in dental school too. So that was probably the same thing. I guess now maybe just learn to be more open with uh, frustration. Also, because we work in an academic setting, that's like our th we get together and lunch and complain about everything. Right. So it's like it helps uh, you have so you, you have colleagues to talk so. with, and I think that's yeah. kind of a good like closing remark is we need to be open with our colleagues. We need to have dental friends. I think that really helps having people that understand us yeah. and. Um, be open about our emotions and know that if you're going yeah. through a hard time, you can talk to other dentists. You can message me if you need to. I've had a lot of people message me actually. Um, and there's always someone there to talk to you. You know, you don't have to go to these extreme, you know, I hate to even say it, but suicide. I mean, they're, you're worth it. We have a hard profession. It's not easy, but it's also a really cool profession. And we can help people. We can make them yeah. look better and make them healthier. And there's not very many professions that can do that. And so we, yeah. it's a great profession, but it's not easy. And it's okay if you have hard times. Yeah. Well, Kyle, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and doing this. And I, this is the first time that we've really actually yeah. got it. It's interesting to do this and get, get to meet right. someone and talk. So I look forward to get to see you in yeah, person, person and, and hang sometime. out at one of these meetings. Yeah. Yeah, and um, again, thanks so much, and um, yeah, until until we meet in person. Sounds good. If anybody is going through hard times, feel free to message me. Absolutely, and I'll put um, I'm gonna put up some of uh, we'll put up information great on the on the store and stuff. But okay, thanks a lot. See you later. All right, All thanks, right. Kyle. See you.